Welcome in everybody, so glad that you tuned in tonight for Wednesday Night in the Word. Welcome to the Greater True Vine Church located in the heart of the Soto at 538 Reunion Road. I would love to see you in the place. I know we're in the pandemic, we have limited seating right now because of social distance, but there is room for you. And um, But I'm just so glad that you tuned in tonight. Listen, let me first ask, how are you doing? Um, I pray and hope that you are doing well and how's your mental health because I know we're living in some stressful times It's difficult times that we're living in but can I tell you something God is faithful God is faithful I mean he will take care of us yes he will he'll take care of you he'll hold you he'll keep you he'll sustain you even in the midst of a pandemic come on now listen will you do Pastor Colbert a favor Will you just tag somebody? Let's just share this broadcast tonight because somebody needs this word. Somebody needs some encouragement. Somebody needs some uplifting, some inspiration, okay? And even some might even need a challenge to go further and go beyond where they're at now, all right? So let's do that. Well, let's make it do what it do. You know what we do here. And uh, tonight, uh, we're going to continue on uh, this theme that we was dealing with last uh Wednesday, when we was talking about Elisha living the greater life. But tonight, we'll put a little different spin on it. I want to talk about tonight being disappointed with God. Uh-oh. <laughs> being disappointed with God. Listen, our uh, scripture tonight, I'm not going to read it all tonight. We're going to just walk through it tonight. But uh, if you want to get your Bibles, it will be 2 Kings chapter 4, beginning with verse 8. And uh, on last Wednesday, we walked through the life of Elisha. And we discovered that Elisha was a man who dared to believe in the greater life. He, he was a man who not only believed in it, but watch this, but he took the necessary sacrificial steps to walk in it. He took the steps as we learned to burn his plows, which was a part of his stable life condition. He decided that he didn't want to live his life in the suitable or in the just good enough. So he burned his plow because he knew that along the way to greater, you will have seasons and moments where you wonder if the struggle is even worth it. And you get tempted to go back and settle in what has always been comfortable and safe for you. So Elisha shows us that the only way to ensure that you don't go back is to make sure you have nothing to go back to. So, there, so we learned that he burned his plow. And also, if you study the life of Elisha in that same book, um, you will learn along the way that a part of living the greater life is imparting the greater life into the lives of others so that they can experience the greater life as well. And in that same book, uh, Elisha challenged a nation where there had not been rain for years. And he challenged a nation to dig ditches in advance of the outpouring of rain because he prophesied to them that rain was going to come. But he, he, he told them to dig ditches in advance and get ready for it, showing that you have to learn how to plan your work and then work your plan in the anticipation of the manifestation miracle that you believe in God for. And then also, uh, if you read the book of uh, Kings, Second Kings, well, you'll see Elisha imparting his greater life into a single mother. How many remember the widow woman? Who about the jar of oil, her husband had died, and she said she had nothing in the house. She said, I have nothing. But he, he imparted a greater life into this single mother who was having some house issues. And he told her that this greater life begins by looking inside your own house, using what God has placed in your disposal to be used, no matter how insignificant it might appear. And we you will also discover that this journey of commitment to living a greater life for God in every area of life, watch this, will oftentimes be marked by setbacks and real suffering. Sometimes, church, let me tell you something. When your faith is getting stronger, sometimes it seems your situation is getting worse. Mm. Sometimes you pray in great faith and you act in obedience and the miracle still don't come. What happened? What happens when the ditch is dug <laughs> but the rain don't come? What do you do when you gather all the jars like the widow woman and they all still don't flow? I mean, sometimes you have done everything you know to do and everything you've been told to do 
And you can end up with a season of disappointment with God. Now, I know most of y'all ain't going to say amen to that because it's a shock to your spiritual system. But you can end up like you can end up feeling like God has failed you or that faith is not a real powerful force. Come on. You, you, you're not going to get delivered if you can't admit it. You did everything to make your marriage work. But the, but your spouse left you anyway. You prayed to be healed, but the doctors couldn't get rid of the tumor. You lunched out in faith and started a new business venture, trusting that it was a God move, but then it failed and you were back to square one. You did all you were supposed to do concerning your finances, but still need a miracle. And you prayed, believing that God would intervene only to have the house still foreclosed or the car repossessed. And let me suggest to you tonight that suffering in those times when you are confounded by God, lack of response or, or a different response than you expected, you, you, you have made the commitment to be a greater person and live a greater life. Let me tell you something, those are not big detours on the road to a greater life, but they become landmarks on your journey. Listen to me today, beloved. Discouragement and frustration is often not a sign of being on the wrong path, but being on the right path. And here is what I want you to get tonight in this teaching. God may not always answer our prayers, but God never wastes your faith. I think I'll say that again. God may not always answer your prayers, but he'll never waste your faith. When you have the faith to persevere and keep trusting God through unanswered prayers, there is a reward on the other side. And all of us, and let's just be honest, all of us on this live tonight, all of us in here, we have experienced unanswered prayer. If you ever experienced uh, uh, unanswered prayer that God didn't answer like you wanted to answer, will you just give me some hearts right quick? Come on. Don't be all this spiritual deep. Come on. Don't be all spiritual deep tonight. Give me some heart. If, if he didn't answer like you wanted him to answer, but let me tell you something. In the economy of God, beloved, no one's faith is ever wasted. If God promised, he will deliver. If you don't get anything else tonight, get this. God is working on your behalf even when our prayers don't seem to be working at all. Good God Almighty. Did you hear what I just said? I said even when your prayers don't seem to be working, don't get it confused. God is still working even when it looks like our prayer is not working. Now come with me to our lesson tonight with Elijah because here we meet a woman whose name was not given. She she was simply described by the place she's from. She's a Shudamite woman. And it's interesting to me, y'all may y'all may say amen to this if you keep it real. <laughs> it's interesting to me that it would appear to me that her life was just fine until God got involved. <laughs> oh, she was going on living all right. She was doing fine till Elisha decided that he wanted to bless her. Don't miss what I just said. Her life seemed all right till God decided that he wanted to get involved in her life. My God, she's a woman of great wealth. She's a woman of great generosity. And whenever the ministry of the prophet Elisha would bring him to or near her hometown, she insisted and providing hospitality to him. She, she developed a tender spot for this man of God. So she went to her husband uh, in 2 Kings, you read it, chapter 4, verse 8. She, she went to her husband about the possibility of building a room unto their house just for when he come through town. And so they, they built this room and it became Elisha's home when he was in that region. So one day, check this out, Elisha decided that he wanted to uh, show kindness to the woman and her husband for being so kind to him. So he calls in his servant to get the woman and he asks the woman, what can we do for you? And watch this. And in her modesty, she basically tells Elisha, I live among my own people. In our translation, she really was saying, I got everything I can ask for. <laughs> but the servant Gehazi knew she wasn't telling him everything. So he informed Elisha that 
she had not been able to bear her husband a child. She was a social insult in that culture and, and that her husband is now up in age so it looks like she's going to die in, a, in embarrassment to her family and her community and it's obvious because the woman doesn't bring it up. It's obvious that, that this is a painful subject to the woman and that they've been trying to conceive uh, that they've been trying to conceive by the reaction she gives the man of God because she basically says to the man of God, don't tease me like this. <laughs> Uh, which you can pick the layers of that because if you would do a psychological profile of that answer, you can pick the layers of what she was saying. She said what she was really saying. She was saying, I, I've been trying this for a long time, but, but don't come here and fool me, man of God. We've been trying to get pregnant and every time we thought we were there. Okay, when we thought we were pregnant, we didn't get pregnant. And every time I was late, I was just late, but the cycle wasn't stopping it. Y'all, we've been trying, so don't fool me like this, man of God. She's no different than we can be. Because when you have lived with lesser long enough, the possibility of greater seemed like a joke. God, who am I talking to in here tonight? When you've been on the rough side of the mountain long enough, the possibility of getting on top of the mountain seemed like somebody teasing you. I mean, have you ever had to dare to believe uh, against the backdrop of previously unfulfilled desire? I mean, what could convince you that the plan of God for you can be greater than anything you've ever experienced or imagined when your dreams here before have been unfulfilled? We pray for something and it don't happen. It tends to make you believe that your faith was wasted. But let me tell you tonight, it takes greater faith to keep on believing when your life has been defined by unfulfilled desire. When you have one unfulfilled desire after another, listen, saying, child of God, it takes greater faith to keep believing that God still has something for you. And then verse 17 becomes one of my first principles of this story. And you're not even going to see it. It says, but the woman conceived. <laughs> you don't even see the principle. You have to possess in yourself and what I call an influential faith. Stick with me. This is, this is what I mean. You have to have the kind of faith that is able to lean on and be impressed upon others until they begin to believe it for it like you believe it for it. Okay, now you have to be a uh, person of influence so that your faith is so influential that you can press your faith on other people who have been skeptical up until now and they'll start believing it just because you act like it's going to happen. <laughs> somebody said, I know somebody out there saying, preacher, where you getting this from? And and she conceived. That's where I got it from. And she conceived. Now you got to remember. Her husband wasn't even in the room when Elisha makes this prophetic declaration that by this time next year, you're going to have a child. He wasn't in the room when Elisha made the declaration, right? But, but he did have to be in the room for the conception. <laughs> I'm just trying to teach it tonight. He didn't have to be in the room for what the prophet said. But he had to be in the room to make what the prophet said come true. I'm trying to keep it clean, y'all. Hear me now. Now remember, now it's obvious that they've been that they've been trying with no results in the past, and now he's old, which means it makes it next to impossible. Which means his wife has had to be the one to relay a message to him from Elisha, which means her faith had to be influential enough to convince her husband beyond all his doubt. Y'all not helping me in here. Sometimes, beloved, to get to the greater life, you got to have such a faith that you are able to lift others up to the, to the level of your faith and make them believe that what you want birth to be possible. And not only to be possible, but is possible. You got to be such a person of influential faith that when everybody around you think you crazy, by the time you get through talking, they are ready to make it happen just like you are. Oh, hallelujah tonight. If you do not possess an influential faith, then you're not ready for the greater things of God. Every parent, 
Listen, every parent is going to have to have influential faith because sometimes you got to convince your child that they are not dumb like the teacher told them. Y'all better hear me tonight. Every spouse has to have influential faith because you got to convince your spouse sometimes that y'all can make it through this season. Every business owner has to have influential faith because you got to convince the folk on your team that this business is going to take off and we're going to make it everything we want it to be. Every ministry leader, come on, has to have influential faith. As a matter of fact, if you don't have it, you don't need to be leading it. Ooh, good God. If you are a leader, and I'm talking about, I ain't just talking about pastors and priests. I'm talking about some of you that are over your ministries or auxiliaries in your ministry. If you are a leader who, who is always dumbing down to where the people are, then you don't need to be leading. Oh, I'm sorry. A leader, come on, is somebody who is so influential that when everybody is in the ministry saying it can't be, it can't happen, they get impressed that it can by listening to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, some of the kids, when you're going off to college, and you, you're going to have to have some influential faith because you're going to run into some folk in college who don't even believe in God. You're going to run into some professors who act like they don't believe in God. You're going to run into folk all over this country and all over, all over this world. And you're going to have to have some influential faith that you will convince others that no matter what the professor teaches y'all, God is still God. Jesus is still his son. The Holy Ghost is still his power. You got to have influential faith. Come on and tell your neighbor... I want to be an influence. Come on, come on. Type that in. Tell your virtual neighbor, I want to be an influence. Tell, tell them, I want my faith. Say it. I want my faith to be influential. I want to walk in that business and make everybody believe that it's going to be a million dollar business. I want to walk in my house and make all my children believe that they're going to be rose scholars. I want to walk in my marriage and make my marriage believe that it's going to be a honeymoon till we die. I want to walk in my church and make everybody in my ministry believe that we are excellent in all that we do. You got to be a person of influence. Somebody said influence. So, so here, this, this woman, she had to have, follow me now, influential faith because her husband was not in the room when the man of God prophesied to her. If you're not going to influence the folk around you, then step away. Because, you know, I, I'm just going to be real. I get so tired of hearing folks say, well, they can't do that, uh, Pastor. They, they're not going to be able to do that, Pastor. Then get out of it then. Don't leave if you think they can't do it. <laughs> All right. That, that, that's when the story turned. That's when the story turned. Because the child, watch this. The child, she ended up having a child. The child takes sick and he ends up dying. Now, she, now she's facing the reality of a dead promise. And I don't know about you, but I would rather for it to never happen than for it to happen only to be unexpectedly and suddenly snatched away from me. Here's my next principle. You have to have a greater faith in God's greater plan. <laughs> Don't judge the greater plan for your life by one individual situation. Even when the worst thing happens and you feel like your faith has been wasted and the situation seemed to be over, let me tell y'all something. God is full of surprises. Woo! God, I wish I had a church tonight. I'm just trying to do a little teaching tonight. But I just wish I had somebody uh, had such a faith that they can just, come on, just use your emoji hands on your, on, on, the, on your keypad and just throw your hands up and just say, surprise me, God. <laughs> Woo, I'm feeling like, yeah, I'm feeling like my faith is wasted and I'm feeling like my promise is dead and I'm feeling like my life is over. But, but God, because I'm trusting in your greater plan, surprise me. Listen to me tonight. No promise from God is ever dead. <laughs> I'm say they did. No promise from God is ever dead. And this woman had that kind of faith. How do I know? Just look at verse 21 through 24. Read it. Just read it. Verse 21 through 24. She, she went up, watch this, and she laid him on the bed of the man of God. Now he's dead. The boy is dead. 
she shut the door behind her and she went out. And she called her husband and said, send me one of the servants and one of the donkeys that I may go quickly to the man of God. And he said, now, why are you going to mess with the mess with the man of God today? It's not the new moon. It's not the new Sabbath. But look what she says. All is well. Mm. Now, her son is dead. She saddled the donkey. She said to her servant, drive forward. Don't slack the pace unless I tell you. Now watch this. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi, his servant, look there. Here, here comes this Shulamite woman. Run and meet her and ask her, is everything well with you? Watch this. Is everything well with your husband? Is everything well with your child? Look what she said. Watch what she said. She said, it is well. <laughs> now, I could have gone with her when she said, is everything right with you? You know, I, I could agree. With, is everything all right with your husband? But he said, is everything all right with the child? Mm. The child is dead. And she says, it is well. Now, now, let, now let, let's back up. Let's back up because she puts her dead son on the bed of Elisha. Her husband comes and her husband says, why are you messing with the man of God today? It ain't the new moon. It ain't the Sabbath. You, you know, leave, leave this alone, baby. It, it, it's a done deal. It, it, it's over. Ain't, ain't nothing you can do about this. Why are you still trying to open that business? Huh? Why are you still trying to make me buy a new house? Why, why are you still trying to go back to college and you 40? Why are you still trying to get in ministry? Just leave this alone. It ain't going to happen. I, I need you to hear what I'm about to tell you, saints. While you want others to partner with you in faith, you can't let others prohibit you with their lack of faith. Oh, oh good God Almighty. The word of the Lord says, where two or three Touch and agree. Are y'all hearing me tonight? And, and so I need you to partner with me in faith, but I'm not going to let you prohibit me when your faith ain't large enough. Woo! Watch me now. This husband had faith. He had faith because they had a child. But he didn't have faith strong enough to go this far. The husband believed for the child against all odds, but he couldn't believe for this miracle. Can, can, let the pastor talk to you. Some folk who began with you in faith won't always stay with you on the journey. Because while they may have a level of faith needed to help you birth it, they ain't going to always have a level of faith to help you resurrect it. Ooh, good God Almighty. And so we know the story. We know the story. She gets to the man of God, lays her complaint to his feet. He sends the servant back to the room where the son is and the servant couldn't make anything happen. And she tells Elisha, uh, you can send anybody you want, but I ain't leaving you. You coming back to this house and you're going to make something happen. And so Elisha, uh, he goes back and he does something very interesting. He lays down on the boy. And in verse 34, it says, he put his mouth on the boy's mouth. And scholars believe that what he did in laying on him, it would be what we call mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. So, so that what he did, watch this, when he laid his mouth on the boy's mouth, is breathed into him. Woo, what are you trying to say tonight, Pastor? It matters who you let speak over you. <laughs> let me tell you something. And you only want people put their mouth on you who have what it takes to breathe life back into you. Let me tell y'all something. Don't let nobody put their mouth on you who can't breathe life into you. God, I'm teaching in here, Holy Spirit. Everybody can't put their mouth on you. Now, what I mean by that is speak over you and give you a word. Listen, you have to have folk around you who have the power to breathe life into you. Gehazi, uh, uh, he, he tried the, uh, the stab on the boy, but that didn't work. One of the things that get preachers in trouble today is that we try too many tricks. 
We, we, we like to lay staffs on people and think if we lay tricks on them, they're going to get resurrected. But if you're going to be a preacher of the gospel, you got to learn how to put your mouth on folk and breathe life back into their dead situation. Oh, I'm almost done. I'm almost done. It took Elisha putting his mouth on the board. And that ought to be every preacher's goal. That ought to be every believer's goal. God give me such faith that when I open up my mouth, I breathe life into people. I speak well over them. I help them resurrect dead situations. It all happened, y'all. It all happened because of the faith of this woman to believe that unfulfilled dreams and dead desires can't stop God. Here's what I think God did, and, I, and I'm done. I mean, you've been trying to get pregnant, can't get pregnant. You get pregnant, your child dies, you're running around talking about all is well, it is well. Now, granted, when you got to the man of God, you didn't try to be fake or phony or super deep and spiritual. When you got to the man of God, you said, listen, I told you not to mess with me. That's another lesson. I ain't got time to preach it. But she told Gehazi everything was well. But when she got to the man of God who represents the presence of God, she spoke her heart. Mm, Y'all missing. See, there's some things you can only disclose when you get to God. Y'all ain't ready for it tonight. There's some stuff that you ain't even got to tell me. It's all right when you know it's not all right. But but there's some stuff you can only talk to God about. Do I have any witnesses in there tonight? Is there anybody tonight that can testify that there were some things that you had to keep in your heart until you got in your prayer closet? But when you got in your prayer closet, you knew you could lay it on God and he wouldn't judge you. He wouldn't talk about you. He would still love you. He would still come for you. There's some things you can't talk to nobody about. There's going to be some nights. That you can't talk to nobody but God They start messing with your Jesus And messing with your faith Making you wonder if Jesus is real Ain't gonna be nobody to talk to There's gonna be some nights Where you're gonna have to talk to God where, where you look like you ain't got the rent To pay that apartment And look like your bills ain't gonna come in And look like your tuition ain't gonna get paid There's gonna be some nights You're gonna have to talk to God about When you fall away from your mama or your daddy and your family and you can't find nobody to hug, you're going to have to talk. Got to have to know how to go talk to God. And I might have a few witnesses tonight that can have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He'll hear your faintest cry and he will answer, oh, I ain't trying to get too happy, but I feel my help in here right now. Anybody ever had a little talk with him and he will answer? She told Gehazi, Everything is all right. That's what she told the servant. But when she got to Elisha, she said, no, mm -mm. it ain't all right. Mm -mm. Yeah, she, listen, why don't you, let's get the principle. She told the servant, Gehazi, it is well. Everything is all right. But when she got to Elisha, mm -mm. no, no, man of God. I, I told you, don't play with my emotions. <laughs> Elisha represents the presence of God. See, it's very interesting to me. And watch what she says. She says, watch what she said. Did I ask my Lord for a son? Hmm. Did I say, do not deceive me? He says to Gehazi, tie up your garment, take your staff. If you meet anyone, don't greet them. Lay my staff. Ooh, y'all are missing something. He tells her, about this time next year, you're going to conceive, right? She conceives by this time next year. So let's say, well, your last month was August. Let's say this September. She conceives in September. So Elisha is not living in the house. He's not a full-time tenant. So nowhere... What, what, what she says to Elisha, does she say the boy is dead? No word does it. She said, didn't I tell you? <clears throat> Did I ask you for a son? Didn't I tell you don't deceive me? Now, for all we know, he's been gone. She could have meant she had a girl instead. <laughs> I'm messing with y'all. 
because I'm going I'm to make a point to you. She doesn't tell Elisha that the boy is dead. Elisha, in response, tells Gehazi, go to that house, put my staff on him, make him get back up. Y'all are missing it. When you take stuff to God, you don't always have to tell him everything that's wrong. <laughs> he already knows what's wrong. And he can fix it without you giving him the whole story. Do I have any witnesses tonight? Come on. Have you ever gone to God and didn't know quite how uh, to get the whole story out? But God knew in his omniscient how to work it out, what you didn't talk about. God got a way of knowing everything even when you don't tell him. And so it's faith. Come on. It's faith. The boy dies. And here's what I think God did. The boy dies. The woman doesn't curse God. She doesn't turn away from God. She doesn't go to another religion. She doesn't say, I'm done with God. She just keeps trusting. Everything's going to be all right. She don't turn away from the church. She don't say, I got to go get a new church because they ain't teaching the word there. Because if they were teaching the word there, my problem would be going on like they're going. She doesn't become a Muslim or a Hindu. Or she doesn't just try staying at home from church trying to teach herself. She doesn't just stay home from worship because she's done with God. She doesn't just stay away from church saying the man of God ain't nothing to him. Up there telling them all of lies. He told me uh, my situation was going to get better. I'm still catching hell. She just keeps saying, watch this, it's going to be all right. Everything is well. Everything is well. All is well. Man, that, 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 that's faith, y'all. That's faith. When everything ain't well, but you're declaring it is well. When things around you dying and you're declaring it is well. When your promise seems to be dead and you're claiming it is well. Here's what I think. And I said this before in my church. Here's what I think. It's like a trust fund. Wikipedia said, and I quote, that trust is a relationship whereby property or real or personal, tangible or intangible, is held by one party for the benefit of another. Okay, listen, a trust holds money aside for an individual until he or she reaches a certain age of maturity. And when the beneficiary reaches that age of maturity, a trustee is responsible to make sure that the beneficiary receives what has been laid or been held in trust for him or her. It's all recorded in a legal document known as a deed. Uh, what are you saying, Pastor? I'm trying not to preach in here, but God got a trust fund with my name on it. And he's governing every deposit in my life. Y'all ain't helping me in here. He knows when the resources need to be released. See, I'm a trust fund, baby. I don't have to, I don't have a deed to review, but I got God's word to rely on. And here's the way the Apostle Paul put it: no matter who or whatever promises God has made, they are yea and amen in Christ Jesus. So let me tell y'all something tonight. Don't put all your unanswered prayers and unfulfilled dreams in the column called waste. God is your trustee. And when you walk by faith, good God Almighty, when life disappoints you, he puts a deposit in. And when you keep your faith, when life shakes you, he will put a deposit in. And when you keep on worshiping him, when life disappoints you, he will put a deposit in. And when you keep on loving him, when life disappoints you, he will put a deposit in. And when you get mature enough, he'll start releasing resources to bless you in other areas. Because when life got rough, you did not quit. When life got difficulty, you did not give up. Your faith is never wasted. What God might be doing in the midst of your disappointment is crediting it to you like he did to Abram. And it's going to pay off woo, in your future. Y'all better hear what I'm saying tonight. I don't know what disappointments you got tonight. I don't know what rough patch you are in. I don't know what hadn't gone like you wanted to go, but God sent me tonight to tell you on this Wednesday night, 
Keep your faith strong. Make the right decision as in regard to God. Don't quit because life is rough because God is depositing your faith in your trust fund. And when folk begin to ask you, how did it work out for you? You just tell them I'm a trust fund baby. And every time I add faith, whoo, God made a deposit. God, I feel like preaching in here tonight. I'm done. I'm talking to somebody uh, uh, tonight. Let me tell you something. The reason it didn't work out for you over there is because God got something better for you over here. And if you can just keep your trust in him and keep your hope in him, he's going to make you a trust fund and release your resources to you just when you need it. Come on, will you do me a favor and just, just tell your virtual neighbor and just tell him I'm a trust fund, baby. Come on. God's got an account with my name on it. He's got an account with my name on it. And if I just keep my faith and if I hold on to his unchanging hands, things may not work out like I want it over here, but he's going to bless me over there. If I just keep my faith when life gets rough, when, when things get tough and when seasons get difficult, here's how you make your deposit. When peace like a river, good God Almighty, attended my way. When sorrow like sea billows roll, whatever my lot, thou have taught me to say, it is well whoa, with my soul. Though Satan shall buffet, though trials shall come, let this blessed assurance be my control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and has shed his own blood for my soul. I'm done teaching now. I'm going to preach and make myself happy. Would you just tell your neighbor, I don't know what you're going through, but tell him it is well. Tell him I don't know what's going on, woo, but it is well. I don't know uh, it, how it didn't work out like you wanted, but it is well. I know it didn't go like you saw it, but it is well. I know 2020 has been a rough year, but it is well. I know it didn't come like you expected, but it is well. I dare you to just wave your emoji hand and say, God, give me peace that surpasses all understanding so I can stand in the face of every disappointment and I can say in the face of every disappointment, it is well with my soul. It is well with my mind. It is well in my spirit. It is well in my emotion. Woo! Praise the Lord. Come on. Oh, my soul. Come on. Tell your neighbor. Say, it is well. Woo! I'm sorry, y'all, but I feel this thing. I done slipped into my happy place. Come on, just tell your neighbor tonight. If you trust God, if you trust God, even in 2020, even in the year of a pandemic, it is well. Whoo, hallelujah. Now, I didn't say it will be well. But it's already well. Woo! He already fixed it. He already worked it out. He's already satisfied. So since I already know it's worked out, I ain't going to wait till it later. I'm going to shout right now because it's already worked out. Come on. Come on tonight. Shout if you know it's worked out. Shout if you know it's all right. Shout if you know he fixed it. Shout if you know he's healed you. Shout if you know he resurrected you. Shout if you know he turned it around. Shout if you know he delivered you. Shout if you know he made a way. Shout if you know he opened the door. Shout if you know you got the breakthrough. Shout if you know you got the divine healing. Shout if you know you got the deliverance. Shout if you know it's going to be all right. Shout if you know it's already all right. Shout if you know it's already done. Don't wait till the battle is over. Over, shout right now. Don't wait till the doctor's report. Shout right now. Don't wait for the bank loan. Shout right now. Don't wait for the approval of the house. Shout right now. Don't wait on the car. Shout right now. Don't wait for the house or the apartment. Shout right now. Don't wait any longer. Shout right now. Shout like it's all right. Shout like it's already done. Shout like he's already fixed it. Shout like he's already made a way. Shout like he's already saved your marriage. Shout like he's already saved your child. Shout like he's already delivered your husband. Shout like he's already paid your bills. Come on. I'm ready to have some church tonight on this Wednesday night. Come on and shout. Woo, hallelujah. It's already done. It's already done. It's already fixed. It's already secured. It's already made. Blessing already yours. Breakthrough already yours. Healing is already yours. 
The finance is already yours. God says, I don't care what died in your face. You keep your faith alive because I'm going to honor your faith. Hmm. When it failed by giving you something better from the trust fund. Woo! If you really believe in God for it tonight, come on, just give God some praise. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Because I, I done got, I done got happy. I, done, I think I, done, I, I taught myself. You thought I was teaching to you, but I was teaching myself. Come on, I'm ready for the greater life. Hallelujah. Listen, I hope you enjoyed this message tonight. I hope it really challenged you and prompt you to keep your faith. Keep your faith. Come on, keep your faith in God. Keep trusting and believing because God. Hallelujah. When you add your deposit, ooh, God is going to release resources. Oh, yeah, I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness. It is well. When disappointments come, you have to stand in the face of those disappointments and still say, it is well. All right? God bless you. Listen, uh, why don't you sow a seed on tonight? Come on. If this word has really blessed you tonight, I want you to sow on tonight. Come on, sow like you never sown before. I believe in this. I believe uh, sow where you want to go. <laughs> okay? Come on. Uh, some of you, I want you to stretch your faith on tonight. You can give by Cash App, Give or Five. There are many ways to give. Um, but uh, please consider sowing a seed. If you need prayer, if you want to join and connect with this ministry, just call that number or you can email us. Uh, somebody will get back with you in 24 hours. All right, I'm done. I got to get out of here. But listen, why settle for good when great is available? I see you Sunday at 10 a.m. We'll have our virtual communion Sunday, all right? God bless you, and I love you with the love of God. Be blessed and just hang on in there.